All right, wave to clip. It's a way to link audio to text, which is natural language and uh, images. So if you are familiar with uh, Clip, Clip is a work by done by OpenAI. It's, it's a way they use contrastive learning to connect text and the images. And uh, the way they build that is uh, just to get some image and the caption pair and the fit it into the contrastive learning model. They, they build some positive examples and negative examples or so contrastive uh, models need to differentiate, uh, make the, the positive examples uh, as close as possible and the negative examples as uh, far away as possible so that they can know, oh, this image is actually corresponding to this uh, text description. So that's the way they do that. And in this work, they want to connect, use the pre-train clip and then another component, which is audio. So the way they do that is they firstly freeze the image encoder that's pre-trained uh, from a cl clip, and then they freeze the image encoder, and they put another, initialize another audio encoder. So they get the uh, images, the frames, and the audio pairs from YouTube videos. So you, they basically to truncate YouTube videos to a lot of uh, small clips, then do the frame and the images like connection, then feed these things as a positive examples to the model. And as of how they connect, construct the negative example is just uh, the random other pairs, these images with some other random audios uh, from the same batch. They basically randomly selected and prevented that from being a real positive example. So they've treated that as a negative examples. So now you have a positive and negative examples. You know how to train a contrastive uh, learning model per to contrastive loads, which with contrastive loads. Then after training the model, will put will map the audio that's similar or the semantically close to the image that's corresponding to very close in the vector space. So that's the way they do that. And after that, the main purpose of this task, this pre-training is actually they want to train a useful audio encoder so that they do use this uh, audio encoder that was pre-trained to do downstream tasks. So what kind of downstream tasks there are? There are something like uh, image audio classification, which is r relatively uh, straightforward. You just give some of the audio clip, then the model need to tell you what kind of audio is that. For example, this urban sounds, AKH, I, I tried this data set before, it's pretty large and it has a lot of different uh, classes, 10 classes and uh, 8,000 clips. And these data sets are pretty, pretty much similar. And there are also some image audio, like a retrieval task and also captioning task. So those are downstream tasks. If you are interested in those tasks, definitely check it out. And they use this to evaluate their pre-trained encoder, audio encoder. And they compare their encoder with some other uh, unsupervised learning model. And uh, they achieve very good results. It's almost uh, outperformed than um, uh, eighty percent of the uh, different tasks, and uh, definitely, uh, if you look at that uh, comparison between unsupervised model, which is wave to clip, to so state of the art model, or the super supervision model, is still not comparable. So still, I think that's uh, still wa some wave to go. But if you look at the amount of data they they are using to pretrain, and they do now actually fine tune the the clipped wave, uh, the, the weights from the clip models, S if they just to straightly, straight for stress this scale this up, they will probably achieve much better performance. But that's being said, they also need a lot more compute power. But I do think I do think this is a way to leverage larger amount of uh, YouTube uh, or uh, Netflix those kind of data, basically on structural data. They are almost unlimited amount of them. So that's the idea of uh, audio clip. And more, it's more interesting. They use uh, they, their generalization capability. It's very high. If you look at this, uh, like future learning, if they only fit one percent, for example, to the model, the model outperform other other unsupervised models quite a lot. And the gap kind of getting 
uh, being close if they fit more when the amount of data is more. But definitely, uh, why you actually care about its uh, future learning capability? Because most of the time, you, you, when you are working on some new task, you definitely don't have enough data. So that's why we care about a lot of situations where the data um, samples are, are rare, uh, like 1% of the training data in the VGG sound data set. And what's more interesting is they use the audio encoder because the audio, they basically they, they prep, pr project the text images audios to the same vector to the same vector space. So the model knows uh, what kind of uh, text corresponding to what kind of images and what kind of audio. So they they feed the model audio and mo model needs to generate images. So when they feed the audio, the model uh, generate this image, which is they, they feed the street music audio. The model generate this, and they also feed the street street music text, the description for street music. The model fit this, generated this, which are both are quite 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 meaningful, I think. And also the the dark bark, and uh, the model just generated this. And for the text, model generated something very weird. And for ch children playing, uh, both audio and the text generations are good. And for gunshots, uh, they generated from different kind of different perspective. For example, the text that shows you gun, and uh, for the audio generation, they show you uh, just a, a gunshot. So that's the how they do that. Is basically you or have the connection with all images, audio, text, so you can use either of them to generate another of them. That's the way to do it. Uh, by the way, if you would like to receive more deep learning videos like this, don't forget to subscribe. I make deep learning videos like these every single week. And your subscription really means a lot to me. Uh, last but certainly not least, this work is a way to clip learning robust audio representation from clip. And uh, it's a very interesting work done by New York University and the Descript. Descript is an interesting company. They're doing some kind of uh, uh, audio uh, editing thing and certainly this this video is not sponsored by them and actually i tried to use their product before and i, I was even a paid user the coolest coolest feature of them is they can remove filler words automatically and also remove the silence clips um, for example uh, when when you make videos most people do uh, say a lot of uh, filler words or some silence moments and uh, what we do usually as a YouTuber is to manually clip, th like cut off those video words or silence. That's actually very basic. Most of creators do that. And uh, uh, doing that manually is extremely time consuming. And what I do is they just uh, transcribe your audio, your, your video audio, then uh, use uh, some model to kind of remove them. Yeah, this is pretty cool. Uh, one of the downside of their product, I would really say, is uh, because it's a cloud-based. So every time you need to uh, you want to edit audio, video, you need to up upload your entire file and uh, download them and uh, edit them from your local. So it's uh, kind of now the end-to-end -end solution. If you want to do everything um, uh, descript, it's kind of uh, not enough features, I would say. Um, maybe they're improving, so I don't know. I'm, I'm now continuing in using that. I hope they can uh, do well, and this is really awesome paper, and that's all. And yeah, take care, take, stay safe, and we, I will see you next time.